Welcome to the Chicago Kitchen. I'm Patty. Today, we're going to be making a very traditional Neapolitan stuffed pizza slash bread. It's not really a pizza at all. We would consider it a bread. The texture is between a bread and a cake. It's kind of fluffy and it's stuffed and it's delicious. So this is called Pizza a la Campo Franco and it's a Neapolitan traditional recipe. Here we go. So I'm going to start with the equivalent of one of those little packets of dry yeast. I have a yeast spoon and this amount is two and a quarter teaspoons. It's exactly what you would get in one of those little packets. So if that's what you're using, that's fine. I buy yeast in bulk because I make all our breads and we just do a lot of baking around here. So one packet of yeast, two teaspoons of sugar, and about a quarter cup of lukewarm milk. I just nuked it in the microwave for 10 seconds and take the refrigerator chill off it. I would tell you to let it sit for about five minutes. I know this yeast is good. I just recently purchased it. I've been using it, so I don't need to wait for it to bloom. I'm going to take a generous teaspoon of salt and mix it into two cups of flour. This is going to be a very soft dough, just a heads up. Okay, so what I'm adding is four eggs. This is basically going to be the liquid So I use extra large eggs. I'm sure large would be absolutely fine. Extra large is what I buy. And two thirds of a cup of butter. Basically what that is, is one stick and two and two thirds cup, uh, tablespoons, I'm sorry, uh, more of butter. So we're gonna throw that in there. If it's one stick and three tablespoons of butter, it'll be fine. Don't make yourself crazy. Okay, so we're going to add this flour. This is two cups of flour with a generous teaspoon of salt. Let me cover this so I don't wear it. And we're going to mix this up until a soft dough forms. Again, this is going to be very soft. stop it for a second and just scrape down the side so we make sure every little bit gets mixed in. This is really yummy. We are having a bit of a thrown together dinner tonight so this will make a nice addition. Pizza a la Campo Franco can be served. <laughs> So what I have here is a half a cup of flour. You don't want to add in more than another half a cup of flour. It should stay a soft dough. So I'm gonna flour my board because this is very sticky. As you can see, we wanna get every last bit of this. Let me get rid of this. Okay. And I'm going to scrape this right out onto my board. You can see how soft this dough is. Now, I'm using a dough bucket for the rising time. A large bowl with saran wrap on top is perfectly fine and acceptable. So I'm going to turn this out onto the flour. Try to get as much of that sticky goodness out of there as you can. Why can I never reach what I need? Good. 
Okay, flour my hands and gently turn it over. Give it a quick knead, but again, do not add more than a half a cup of flour, just enough to keep it from sticking to your hands. You can see how soft this dough is. You can actually smell it, it smells so good. Okay. I'm, I only basically added a quarter of a cup of flour between the board and what I put on the dough and on my hands. So really, you shouldn't need to add more than that. Just turn it over and knead it a few times. Don't let it stick to the board. There we go. Oh, sticking in my hands. So we're going to throw a little extra flour on there. Okay. And just wipe my hands off. Okay. Here's my dough bucket right here. And I'm going to Make sure it's well greased on the inside. Oil, butter, or ham. You can spray it with baking spray if you like. I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to turn it over to make sure it is completely coated with the oil. Cover. This is going to be set aside for two hours in the warmest spot in your house. Um, I've said this before, in this house, I generally turn our gas fireplace on and I put my dough bucket about a foot and a half to two feet in front of the fireplace and it works really well. So we'll see you in two hours. Okay, so while our dough is rising, I'm just going to do a little bit of prep for what will become the filling for our delicious pizza al campo franco. What I took was about eight, six to eight, depending on the size, Roma tomatoes. Our market happened to have some wonderful Roma tomatoes, so that's what I'm using. You can also use Camparis. Try to find a sweet tomato that's really ripe. What I did was I boiled a large pot of water, dropped them in for two minutes till the skin split, scooped them out, and dumped them in ice water. That allowed me to peel them and cut them in half. I took out as many seeds as I could, don't get crazy, and I allowed them to drain on paper towels. Now, I am going to roast them at 400 for about 15 minutes. You can also use a saute pan, a frying pan, a little bit of oil in the bottom, maybe a tablespoon or two, and gently saute them. We are not looking to make sauce. We just want to tenderize these raw tomatoes a little bit. Um, it will be the stuffing, part of the stuffing for our bread. So when they come out of the oven, I'm going to put them back on paper towels to drain so it's not soggy. Um, to me, this is easier than the frying pan. And honestly, I have to use the frying pan for something else that I'm working on. So about 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe. We don't want them brown, we don't want them mushy in a 400 degree oven. And we will be back when our dough is risen. Okay, so we're back. Here's our dough, nicely risen. I have a floured board here and I'm going to, oof, very sticky. I'm going to turn this out onto this board. This dough almost looks fluffy. Okay, what I have here is a spring form pan with parchment in the bottom. Spray the sides, which I haven't done. 
I don't know what I did with my spray. Alrighty. Okay, so we're back. I have a springform pan, parchment on the bottom, and I'm just giving the sides a light oiling. Okay, this is the dough turned out of the bucket. It's very, very fluffy and sticky. So I have a floured board there we go. Okay, very soft dough. All right, so I am going to take about a third of this off. I'm gonna say about that much. Put it off to the side. And the rest of this dough going in the spring form. Okay. I should have made more room here. And gently, with floured fingers, spread it out. Now, you want to try to go a little bit up the sides. Keep flouring your fingers. This is a very soft, sticky dough. and make sure that you don't leave any holes in the bottom. There we go. Patch it up if you see any holes through the bottom of this. I am really just learning this video stuff. I've never been great with tech and my kids are out of the house now and I don't have my brilliant grandchildren around. So you guys are going to have to excuse me when I invariably screw it up and be a little patient. Okay, what I have here is some mozzarella cheese shredded. I just shredded this morning. I'm going to throw some on the bottom. Just a light layer. Leave a rim. Leave that rim that you tried to push up the sides of the pan just a little bit. Okay, that's good. Here's those tomatoes that we roasted earlier. Drain them on paper towel. Try not to take the liquid with you and lay it out right on top of the mozzarella. This is going to be so yummy. I cut some of these in pieces so that I'd be able to spread it out more. There we go. Good. Okay. A little salt and pepper. And we have some fresh basil leaves here. Summer's coming, can't wait. And I'm just gonna lay these basil leaves right on top of the tomatoes. Now, I told you that this was a Neapo traditional Neapolitan recipe. Traditionally, this recipe would have been made with lard, um, but I can't get really high quality lard here, so we use lots of butter in that dough. And what I have is prosciutto. So we're gonna take just a few slices of prosciutto right on top and rip them up. Doesn't have to be super neat. It's actually better if you rip it up a little bit because it will be easier to cut through. Good, and 
a little more mozzarella cheese right on top. Excellent. This is going to be so good. Now we're going to take heavily flour your board. This last third of the dough and press it out into a nice big circle or as big as you can get it or as close as you can get it to a circle. We want to pick it up. Oop. Don't worry about that. Just patch it up. Lay it right on top and seal the edges with the dough underneath. Oh, I made a bit of a mess here, didn't I? Okay. I'm going to take some of the excess and patch that up. It's such a soft dough. It's very forgiving. So if you have to grab a little to patch, no problem. There we go. You're going to try to seal the edges as well as you can. Make an attempt to fill in the holes, but don't worry about it too much. Pull up the dough from the sides. There we go. This is going to rise for another hour. I'm going to cover this, let it rise for another hour, and then into a 400 degree oven for about a half hour. So, I'm going to let this rise for an hour, cover it with a towel. I'm going to put it in a 400 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes, and then we'll be back. See you then. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a quick peek. It's been rising for an hour. And this is what it looks like. You can see how puffy it is. Fluffy. This is going to go in a 400 degree oven for about 25 minutes, 25 to 30. Take a look at it and then we'll be back. Yummy. Okay. So I just put this out. Check that out. 25 minutes. I'm going to release the side. There we go. Is that beautiful? Let me slide it onto my board, just like that. And there's your pizza Campo Franco. Is it not beautiful? Now I'm gonna cut into it just to show you what the inside looks like and because I haven't had lunch anyway. So, remember what I said, this is the texture is between a bread and a cake. Check that out. Is that not beautiful? You can see the cheese, the basil, the prosciutto. Yummy. I'm just going to cut off a little piece to take a bite. This is really hot, especially with the tomato. Oh my God, that's so good. Thank you for joining us today. Mm. You have to make this, this is delicious. Thank you for joining us today. Come back, we're going to have some Great new recipes coming up. Bye.